Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Jessica Harrington tonight on the now Bakersfield. A video showing a man allegedly dumping a dog has been making the rounds on social media, but the man involved says it's all a misunderstanding. We have the breakdown. Plus, several students attending Bakersfield College do not have a place to call home. We'll tell you about a bill looking to make some positive changes. And a hospital is looking to keep local newborns bundled up. Hear all about the Little Hats Warm Hearts campaign. That's all ahead on the now Bakersfield. Chris? Let's get a look at our lineup here today on the now and a rule change that would protect vulnerable borrowers from even more debt that can come with payday loans. Well, it may not be happening anymore. We're getting in on both sides of that debate. And what is on your phone? Is that actually private? Some popular apps have been secretly recording your screen without asking. We're going to tell you how that's happening. And more than 6 million animals end up in shelters across the country every year. Many of them don't end up getting adopted, but now some new apps, even ones used for dating, can help more people find their pet match. Good evening. A video showing a man allegedly dumping a dog has been going viral on social media. But now the man in the video is speaking out, saying he didn't abandon the dog and it's all a misunderstanding. A video has been making the rounds on social media showing what appeared to be a man ditching a dog near Lake Ming. The dog, a mixed breed boy, is currently at Kern County Animal Services. We tracked down 38 year old Danny Powell, who is the man in the video. He says the video is deceiving. Powell says he goes out to Lake Ming to exercise and while out walking, he was approached by the dog. He said he gave it some food and that it wouldn't leave him alone. Powell says he would never intentionally abandon an animal. Our cameras were rolling as animal control officers showed up at Powell's house to investigate if the dog belonged to him. I'm not trying to hurt an animal or nothing, but I can't have him jumping up on me. As you can see in the video, he's all over me going crazy, you know. I mean, I can see where he says, oh, this is your dog or whatever, you know, but like the officer just looked, I don't have a dog. There's no nothing. I have a cat and a little tiny poodle dog. Powell was not cited by animal control officers, but an investigation is ongoing. The dog, which has been named Anakin by officials at the shelter, say if an owner does not come forward to claim him, he will go up for adoption on Monday. Homelessness is an issue that heavily impacts the state of California, with some students attending school without a place to call home. Now a new bill is looking to offer some relief. The Now's Daniela Garrido looks how, at how this bill could potentially help students at Bakersfield College. Housing insecurity, it's something many students at Bakersfield College struggle with. At Bakersfield College, we do have uh, students that are identified, self-identified as homeless students. Um, some of them live at the Mission, some live at different um, venues here in Bakersfield. But beyond circumstances, they share a common goal. As Bakersfield College is to promote student success and to really get these students on the right path so that they can have a better future, not just for themselves, but then to be a productive citizen of Kern County. According to Nikki Demania, BC's student life director, the amount of homeless students on campus is about five to six thousand. Would I say all six thousand students are homeless, or all six thousand are students are in executive need? Um, probably not. Uh, but I would definitely say that they are in need in one way or the other. Uh, even if it's a quick little bite um, to get them through the day, uh, or if it's really that they're homeless without a place over to sleep with. But new state legislation is trying to tackle the problem on campus. So the help that BC is providing the homeless population on campus, um, it's, it's getting bigger. Assembly Bill 302 would require community colleges to grant overnight access to parking facilities for any homeless student enrolled in classes. The most helpful thing that anybody can do for them because of the fact that it would relieve that unnecessary stress of having to worry about getting to campus, making it to their class on time, which in return comes down to the whole aspect of then remaining in college and graduating. 
Currently in California, there's a law that requires community colleges to provide showers for homeless students. We want to make sure that if it gets passed, that we're implementing things to the best. Similar to the shower proposal or legislation that went in a year or so ago, BC was definitely one of the forefronts in making sure that we uphold to that legislation. That'd be no different here. Officials at BC say they're monitoring the proposed bill and already working toward a plan to make it possible for their students. We, because we track our legislations really well and we know what's coming up front, BC has always been the one never to be reactive. We've been very proactive on making sure that our student success is at the highest. That was the now's Daniela Garrido. Officials say if the bill were to pass, it would provide funding to community colleges, increasing faculty and possible security in order to allow students to stay on campus overnight. 2,000 tiny red hats have been knitted by the Kern County community for local newborns. It's all part of the Little Hats Big Hearts campaign. The campaign is put together by Adventist Health and the American Heart Association, receiving some volunteer help from Bakersfield High School students. The campaign kicked off February 1st, focusing on heart health and providing stylish new caps for newborn babies. Officials say the Little Hats Big Hearts campaign started back in 2014 and exploded in popularity. Here in Kern County, this is the third year of the program. Organizers say raising awareness about heart health and helping local babies in need is an easy cause to get behind. It's so important to educate from day one, you know, about heart health and about the health for our youngest in our community and so this cause is just a wonderful one to help out with and it also brings kind of awareness for my own students about the importance of health and what it means to take care of not only yourself but others. Organizers say they'll be giving out the little hats throughout the month. They also say it's never too early to start focusing on heart health so get plenty of sleep, make sure to exercise and eat your vegetables. Well, we've all heard the warnings about payday loans, and soon there could be one fewer barrier to get one. The now Kamasi Aaron taking a look at the possible impact. The rule from President Obama's term hadn't taken effect yet, but it would require lenders to make an effort to make sure that people who walk into places like these looking for loans could actually afford to pay them back. If the rule is rescinded, they won't have to. It's just a signature and a loan and you walk out the door, and that's really dangerous. Experts say that's pretty much all it takes to walk into a place like this and walk out with a payday loan. They're typically offering $300, $400, $500 dollar loans but the interest rates are anywhere from 300 to 600 percent or even higher. That's why Bruce McCleary with the National Foundation for Credit Counseling says removing protections for consumers can have big financial consequences. It's, it's one thing that you're borrowing a loan that could potentially have 600 percent interest and come stacked with a ton of fees, but it's another thing if you get yourself in a situation where you can't pay it back, then you're, then you're in real danger because then there are fees added on top of fees. Consumer advocates believe it's the beginning of a downward spiral. If borrowers can't repay their loans on time, they often borrow more and get deeper in debt. According to data from the CFPB, half of all payday loans are a part of a sequence that stretches at least 10 consecutive loans. And monthly borrowers are disproportionately likely to stay in debt for 11 months or longer. It is a tough way out once you start borrowing to cover uh, what you uh, what you would normally uh, use cash for. But the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau argued that rescinding the rule and not requiring lenders to underwrite their loans would increase consumers' access to credit. Saying in a statement, the Bureau is concerned that these provisions would reduce access to credit and competition in states that have determined that it is in their residents' interest to be able to use such products subject to state law limitations. Now, this isn't final. The public has 90 days to comment on the proposed changes to the rule before a final decision is made. For the now, I'm Kamasi Aaron. Kamasi, thank you. Let's get back to our lineup here. More than 6 million animals end up in shelters across the country every year. But now some new apps can help more people find their pet match.
Well, it may seem like a lot of breweries are popping up these days. In the business of beer, it's worth billions of dollars. But it's also an industry that is dominated by men. In 2014, a study found that only 4% of head brewers in America are women. Well, one group is trying to smash that glass ceiling batch after batch. Each glass filled at this bar is about much more than the IPA or the lager flowing from the tap, if you ask Emily Stewart Masker. And what is it about beer that you like? I like how it brings people together. So I like that it's an occasion thing, um, that you can, you know, a beer can sort of remind you of, of a great time with friends. Much of this beer are her creations. She's a brewer at Blue Moon in Denver. She brewed her first batch of beer for a science project in the seventh grade. I sort of figured out that beer can be this um, super dynamic thing, that it's not necessarily just um, light lagers or whatever, that there's this whole new world that you can, you can drink and achieve, and it's awesome. It's a career of passion. The female representation in this industry, and I think all industries, could improve. One that she hopes more women will join. The more focus that's put on diversity in this industry, the stronger it will become. Emily's one of the leaders of Denver's chapter of the Pink Boots Society, an international group with chapters across the U.S. supporting women in the business of beer. I think our first meeting we had about 15 to 16 people um, and now we have over 100 members. Pink Boots is a support network for lady brewers and holds fundraisers to support scholarships to make sure everyone gets a chance to learn the craft. I love it because it hits on, you know, it's, it's a STEM career for sure, right? It has science, all of that stuff in there. There's engineering that goes on when you're pushing liquids from one area to another, but you also get to, to play in that creative space too. So it sort of lights up both sides of the brain. A mission to break through any glass ceiling in their way. What's the most satisfying part of this job? Uh, when somebody says, that comes in and they're like, hey, I had that beer you made and it was awesome. By keeping glasses full in bars and breweries across America. Yeah, next month, Pink Boots will be coming together across the country to brew special beer that will be served to raise money for scholarships. You can check out their website, pinkbootsociety.org. Well, those of you who go to religious services, well, you're more likely to be happier than those who didn't. This is according to a Pew Research study. The religion aspect is really just one piece of this happiness puzzle, according to what they found. The study says 36% of actively religious Americans, meaning those who go to worship services, say they're very happy. Just a quarter of inactively religious, those who believe but don't attend regular service or unaffiliated people, said the same. Now, health plays a role here. The actively religious people were more likely to not smoke, avoid heavy drinking, and are in very good health. Those people who attend religious services were found to be more community-minded as well. 58% of them belong to at least one other volunteer organization. 69% say they always vote in a national election. Now, the study does warn that it's hard to say if attending worship services actually causes these outcomes. It's entirely possible that just healthier people are simply able to attend more services. Well, let's get back to our lineup here. And is what's on your phone really private? Well, some popular apps have been secretly recording your screen without asking. We're going to look into how that's happening. All right, well, let's take a live look at downtown Bakersfield. Look at the moon. Nice, clear skies. Chilly temperatures, though, Allison. Oh, yeah. As we head into the evening hours, it's going to be a little bit chilly. Not quite as cold as what we've been feeling the past several days. But today was relatively warm. 57 degrees was our high, and that's nearing those seasonal temperatures, which is at 61 for this time of year. So that is warmer than what we were feeling this time yesterday. Up 4 degrees here in Bakersfield, as well as in the mountains. And that warming trend only going to continue. So here in Bakersfield, we could be reaching that 60 degree mark with those mostly clear skies throughout the afternoon. 49 as a high in Lake Isabella and the South Mountains will be in those low to mid 40s as well. But unfortunately, as temperatures continue to climb, that means our air quality will be worsening just slightly. We will be back to the moderate range with an AQI of 55 and there are no restrictions, but burning is discouraged. But as we head into the weekend, we are tracking a series of storms. So this first one going to be making its way into the county in the evening hours on Friday. Continue
continuing throughout the early morning hours on Saturday. So most of that rain here in the valley while the time you are sleeping. But when you wake up another day of just gorgeous air quality, and that is good news for Alta Sierra because this is a cold system. So that snow level going to be down to 3,000, right around 4,000 feet as well. So going to be looking at those snow showers throughout the day on Saturday in Alta Sierra. Then again on Sunday with a brief chance on Monday. But for us here in Bakersfield, as the series of storms makes its way through the county, temperatures are going to be dropping significantly. We'll have a high of 52 degrees by Monday and then drying out on Tuesday. And then we are tracking our next system beginning on Wednesday, continuing throughout the day on Thursday. This is going to be an atmospheric river, so going to be bringing more moisture than what we were seeing over the weekend, as well as warming temperatures, looking at a high of 58 degrees on Thursday for Valentine's Day. And then those rain chances continue into next weekend. And now Bakersfield will be right back. by recording our phone screens. This is information. Well, it may seem like a lot of breweries are popping up these days. In the business of beer, it's worth billions of dollars. But it's also an industry that is dominated by men. In 2014, a study found that only 4% of head brewers in America are women. Well, one group is trying to smash that glass ceiling batch after batch. Each glass filled at this bar is about much more than the IPA or the lager flowing from the tap, if you ask Emily Stewart Masker. And what is it about beer that you like? I like how it brings people together. So I like that it's an occasion thing, um, that you can, you know, a beer can sort of remind you of, of a great time with friends. Much of this beer are her creations. She's a brewer at Blue Moon in Denver. She brewed her first batch of beer for a science project in the seventh grade. I sort of figured out that beer can be this um, super dynamic thing, that it's not necessarily just um, light lagers or whatever, that there's this whole new world that you can, you can drink and achieve, and it's awesome. 
It's a career of passion. The female representation in this industry and I think all industries could improve. One that she hopes more women will join. The more focus that's put on diversity in this industry, the stronger it will become. Emily's one of the leaders of Denver's chapter of the Pink Boots Society, an international group with chapters across the U.S. supporting women in the business of beer. I think our first meeting we had about 15 to 16 people um, and now we have over 100 members. Pink Boots is a support network for lady brewers and holds fundraisers to support scholarships to make sure everyone gets a chance to learn the craft. I love it because it hits on, you know, it's, it's a STEM career for sure, right? It has science, all of that stuff in there. There's engineering that goes on when you're pushing liquids from one area to another. But you also get to, to play in that creative space too. So it sort of lights up both sides of the brain. A mission to break through any glass ceiling in their way. What's the most satisfying part of this job? Uh, when somebody says, that comes in and they're like, hey, I had that beer you made and it was awesome. By keeping glasses full in bars and breweries across America. Yeah, next. Well, new today, several apps are tracking us by recording our phone screens. This is information discovered by TechCrunch. The now is Annie Taylor showing us what information could be most vulnerable. The apps involved are all popular apps from major companies we all use. Companies like Hollister, Expedia, Hotels.com, and Abercrombie & Fitch. They all use Glassbox. It's a tech firm that helped develop these companies' apps. It turns out that Glassbox uses a technology called Session Replay. It's technically supposed to help users. Session Replay allows developers to record your screen so they can figure out what went wrong if something doesn't work. They can see every tap and keyboard entry you make. That means personal information was recorded the entire time and then sent back to their developers. Another company who used Session Replay is Air Canada. It's accused of having recorded passport numbers and credit card information. At least 20,000 customers were affected. Experts say this could be a problem if companies aren't doing their part to protect this information. Glassbox says all the data is secured and encrypted.
and nothing is shared with third parties. Amazon is also facing backlash today after it was revealed it's been recording video of people's faces. In this case, users were aware of Amazon doing this. A seller in Vietnam tells BuzzFeed that he was prompted to take a five-second video of his face for verification purposes. The ACLU is now raising questions about how these videos are being used. Amazon has not confirmed if it's actually doing this, but has said they're always innovating to, quote, improve the seller experience. In both cases, experts are calling on tech companies to be more transparent about the data they're collecting and how they're using it. Andy, thanks. And a special dog food, oftentimes recommended by vets, is under recall. And we talked to two pet owners who say their dogs died after they ate the food. And tomorrow on the now, the mistake that led to the recall and what the company's now doing. Well, check this out. An East Bakersfield Firehouse added an extra crew member and station dog to their ranks today, making an icy addition to this heated profession. Check it out. Meet Bernardo and his trusty dog, Skippy, which were standing proud outside of the firehouse on Union and Bernard this morning. Officials say one of their crew members lived up by Alta Sierra, which has been enjoying quite a bit of snowfall recently. And when he came to work, he had a bunch of snow stuck to his car. So neighborhood kids started to play with the snow. Then firefighters built Bernardo the snowman and his snow dog. Officials say many of the kids had never seen snow before. Earlier in the day, firefighters also had a snowball fight with children on their way to school. Very cool. Well, Valentine's Day is nearly upon us, and you can do the usual route and go to dinner, buy some chocolates, go to a movie, or you can grab your running shoes and take part in the annual Valentine's Day run. The run will be held at Cal State Bakersfield this weekend. Couples, friends, and singles are welcome to head out and compete for homemade custom heart-shaped awards. You can run or walk a 5K or a 10K, your choice. Today is the last day to sign up online. Otherwise, you have to do it before the race. The Valentine's Run benefits the CSUB Kinesiology Club. And if you choose to head out for the run, you may see me out there. I'll be doing the 10K, so I hope I can race alongside of you. Again, that all starts at 9 a.m. Saturday morning. You can find more information on our website, turntotwenty23.com. Coming up tonight on 23 ABC News at 11, local firefighters out at Meadows Field this morning holding hot drills. See how having the training here in town will save the county thousands of dollars. We're going to have that story and much more tonight on 23 ABC News at 11. In the meantime, though, chilly temperatures, and we are not done with these storms, Allison. I know we are tracking a series of storms making its way into the county later this weekend, but this evening, looking at mostly clear skies, 47 degrees right now here in Bakersfield. So if you are going to be taking part in that run with Jessica on Saturday, <laughs> looks like most of these morning showers will be clearing out by them. So that means good air quality. Good. Breathe easy. That's going to do it for us on the now. We'll see you back here at 11.